All right, let's all get our hymnals this morning. Stand and sing page 131. 131. I was once a sinner, but I came pardon to receive from my Lord. This is freely given, and I found that he always kept his word. There's a new name written down in glory, and it's mine, oh yes, it's mine. And the white robed angel sing the story. A sinner has come home, for there's a new name written down in glory. And it's mine, oh yes, it's mine. With my sins forgiven, I am bound for heaven never more to roam. I was humbly kneeling at the cross, fearing not for God's angry frown. When the heavens opened and I saw that my name was written down there's a new name written down in glory and it's mine oh yes it's mine and the white road angel sing the story a sinner has come home for oh, there's a new name written down in glory and it's mine, oh yes, it's mine. With my sins forgiven, I am bound for heaven, never more to roam. In the book tis written, Saved by grace, all the joy that came to my soul. Now I am forgiven, and I know by the blood I am made whole. There's a new name written down in glory, and it's mine, oh yes, it's mine. And the white robed angels sing the story. A sinner has come home. For there's a new name written down in glory. And it's mine. Oh yes, it's mine. With my sins forgiven, I am bound for heaven evermore to Rome. All right, good morning. Good to see all of you here this morning. And if you weren't here Thursday night, you missed a real good service. Amen. We even had a steel guitar up in here. Mm, boy, it sounded good. All right, no birthdays or anniversaries this week. So, choir, y'all ready to sing?
do. sure like to share there's one special way I can show you I care I could offer opinion that might prove a truth or the only sure answer Here's what I'll do I will talk to my Father for you And if I know my Father Here's what He'll do He will lay at your feet all the things you pursue it's no bother for my father will do it for you Each tear 
that ever fell from these eyes. So if you've got a mountain alone you can climb, I'll be take your burdens and I'll make them light. I will talk to my Father for you. And if I know my Father, here's what He'll do. He will lay at your feet all the things you pursue. It's no bother, for my Father will do it for you. Let me talk to my Father for you. And if I know my Father, here's what He'll do. He will lay at your feet all the things you pursue. It's no bother, for my Father will do it for you. It's no bother, for my Father. It's fair and bright Where there is perfect peace In that everlasting light Jesus has gone to build for me A mansion there I know And the next time that you see me I may be living in my heavenly home the next time that you see me, maybe on streets of gold. The next time that you see me, I may be wearing a brand new robe. I may be kneeling at his feet or shaking his nail-scarred hand. The next time that you see me, I may be living in glory land. You may come to visit me and knock upon my door. You may not get an answer. I won't be living there anymore. For I'm just here for a short while. Then I'll soon be gone And the next time that you see me I may be living in my brand new home The next time that you see me Maybe on streets of gold The next time that you see me I may be wearing a brand new robe I may be kneeling at his feet Or shaking his nail-scarred hand The next time that you see me I may be living in glory land I may be kneeling at his feet or shaking his nail-scarred hand The next time that you see me 
I may be living in glory room at the cross for another heavy burden to be left by a weary passerby there's still hope for your cause for a loving god is waiting to restore to you the joy you left inside there's still time to decide that the father really loves you and it's true He'll never leave your side No matter what you've heard You can believe His word There's still room, there's still hope There's still time God's word has been revealed for all to hear Jesus loves you, He cares So when the storms of life are drawing near Hear your heartache we'll share There's still room at the cross For another heavy burden to be left By a weary passerby There's still hope for your cause For a loving God is waiting to restore to you The joy you felt inside there's still time to decide that the Father really loves you and it's true. He'll never leave your side. No matter what you've heard, you can believe His Word. There's still room, there's still hope, there's still time. You may wonder if the Lord is looking on Can He comfort my heart? There's room for your burden at the cross Lay it down where you are There's still room at the cross For another heavy burden to be left by a weary passerby There's still hope for your cause For a loving God is waiting to restore to you The joy you felt inside There's still time to decide That the Father really loves you and it's true He'll never leave your side No matter what you've heard you can believe His Word, there's still room, there's still hope, there's still time. No matter what you've heard, you can believe His Word, there's still room, there's still hope, there's still time. Amen, amen. I'm glad he kept plenty of room in the cross for me, amen. 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 See, if y'all want, he will. God, God do great work through the youngins. That's right, tell them, boy. Take your Bibles with us this morning. Go to St. John chapter 1. St. John chapter 1. I'm going to try to help you a little bit this morning, so you need to listen, okay? I'm going to give you a little help. Y'all know what today is? December the 5th. How many weeks till Christmas? Couple. It ain't going to be long. We're going to talk about that a little bit this morning. 
We're going to talk about planning for Christmas. I mean, when you get down to it and go to thinking about it, there's a lot of activity that goes into planning for Christmas. Now, some women folk will start planning for Christmas on January 7. Yeah, they'll get started doing stuff. And, and I mean, they, they get so wound up in Christmas that they, they're looking forward. They start counting her down. They was, somebody used to send Jacob stuff on Facebook and, and give a count ever. I mean, we're talking 265 days, 232 days. To, you know, and just she'd do that to him all the time just to aggravate. But, you know, folks, there's some folks that they're, they're looking forward and planning for the next Christmas. But... What they're planning for is the gifts they're going to buy, the lights that they got to put up, the Christmas tree they're going to go pick out, the food they're going to eat, the families that's coming, what time we're meeting, and they go through this extravagant labor of planning for Christmas. Well, I'm going to deal with planning for Christmas this morning. In John chapter 1, begin reading with me at verse number 1. The Bible says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. And all things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness, and darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. Then we go back to the light part. You got a little insertion there about John the Baptist. First, you start off talking about Jesus. You take a little break. John's going to be a witness for Jesus. Wants everybody to understand he's not the light, but he is a witness of that light. And then you come back to Jesus in verse 9. It says, That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his, to his own, and his own received him not, but as many... As received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Let's pray. Our Father, we thank you for the privilege, the opportunity to be joined together here at thy house today. I thank you for each one that's been able to make it to the house of God with us to enjoy this time of singing, this time of worship, and this time that we'll have around the Word of God. Father, for those that could not be here, I pray that your blessings and power and your comfort would be with them. For those that could be here, Lord, and are not, we pray that God you'd stir their hearts. May the love of God work deep in their soul again to bring them to the house of God where they need to be. Have your will today in saving sinners. Strengthen the saints. Freshly anoint thy servant, Lord, as I stand before you. I do need thy touch. I pray you'd cleanse and purge and forgive. Let not anything be in my mind or heart that would be a hindrance to the Holy Ghost of God fully using us to thine honor and to thy glory today. We thank you for this year, this time of year. We thank you for what it means to our hearts. And we thank you for first being the giver. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now, when we begin our studies, we start in December. We're leading into Christmas, and we are going to keep the main theme the main theme. And we're going to keep the main theme the main theme. Y'all going to work me this morning, aren't you? So we, we get to thinking, and we look here in John 1, and he gives us a good picture of the incarnation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, a lot of times when we begin the Christmas story, we'll read over in Matthew, or we'll read the account there in Luke, which are good accounts of this. But this gives us a little bit deeper look into the planning of Christmas. There's much that's been said here. There's, there's a lot of... Uh, 
special gems that we can find in here. Uh, these scriptures are are great scriptures to open for us. And, and uh, preacher James Smith that wrote the handfuls on purpose said the opening words of this chapter, that being John, are among the most profound penned by the hand of man. And when you think about this, you think about what we just read. There is everything about God pinned down in that little outline right there. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. That's in the beginning. That takes you back to the beginning of everything. Now, before God, nobody can explain nothing. There, there's, no, there's no explanation before God because God's always been, always will be. I can't understand all that. I ain't God. I don't have that capabilities, neither does any other man. Before, there was nothing but God. God's always been there. He is eternity. No beginning, no ending. The Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He's, he's got it all. And when you study when you study your Bibles and you get to looking at this, I, I was praying and looking at this and thinking that way, and uh, God was working in my heart this week. And then during the preaching uh, the other night, Brother Joe was preaching to us, and man, what a great service we had. I, I really, the only bad thing about it is a lot of folk wasn't here, and I hate that. It really bothers me that folks didn't get to come and get to enjoy that great preaching, because, man, it was great preaching, great singing, and that's what we need these days. We need it. <clears throat> but in that, God got to working in my heart. I got to studying, looking in this direction for what God would do, and I got to thinking about the planning of Christmas. We done a little planning around here. The ladies got to talking about the them flyers and and got all these things set up and got it worked out. Miss Sue made contact with the lady that does them, and we got these in here. Man, we're getting it planned out so everything will be nice and pretty and look good. And uh, I love the Christmas colors and the settings. There's so much in it. I preached many years ago here on the Christmas colors and what they mean to me. And uh, when you get to studying the red and the crimson and you, you learn what these all mean, I better not touch it, I'll kill it. <clears throat> and then I'll be in trouble because I don't know which one of them's mine. But uh, you get to study what that crimson color stands for, that crimson flow into the blood and, and, and the green and the peace and all the different colors and what they mean. Man, there's so much to learn and study and enjoy about the Christmas season. <clears throat> when you look here with us in John 1, you'll find how the planning of Christmas started. The planning started before creation. What, 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 what? I'm talking about real Christmas. Y'all with me now? Is everybody with me? We're not doing the commercialized stuff. We're, we're talking about the realness of Christmas and the planning of Christmas. Before the world was created, it says from before the foundation of the world, Christ was set to be our sacrifice. From before, when you look those things up, I give you the right word. You look up foundation. When you look that up, you'll find out where before the foundation of the world, Christ was appointed, Christ was set to be the sacrifice. When you study the word Christ, you understand what that is. That's the anointed one, the appointed one, the one that was set out for a specific purpose, and that purpose was to go to Calvary. So the planning was before creation. Now this... This stumps the toe of the historian teachers because they try to take us back to some evolutional boom boom. <coughs> My only question to them is this. Where did Adam come from? They said that we evolved out of an explosion between some atoms. Where did them atoms come from? Who made the atom? Not A-D-A-M, A-T-O-M. Ain't that right? Y'all look a little confused. I was trying to make sure I was in the right gear there. But, uh, you know, when they, when they go back to that, they, they want to take away the fact that there's a God in heaven that created this universe. They don't want to acknowledge God. They don't want to acknowledge Jesus Christ, the Son of God. They especially don't want to acknowledge what we read this morning. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. 
Now, who's the Word? We know that in verse 14, that the Word was Christ. Because the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. So the planning started before creation. So when I mentioned a lot of ladies will start planning January 7, y'all are still behind. Because God planned Christmas before the foundation, the creation of the earth. Amen? And he even done that. He done that by Christ. Now you got to read and, 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 and not just read past it. You got to read what's there. It says, in the beginning was the word as Jesus Christ. Proof for that I just quoted was, and the word was made flesh, verse 14. So we know the word is Christ and the word was and the, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So we got the Word is Christ, and Christ is God. Now, the world don't want to acknowledge that. They will acknowledge there was a man named Jesus that was crucified by the Romans. He died, and his disciples stole his body. That's the story you'll get from scientific studies and from the old world histories. They'll, they'll give you that much. Well, we know who the Christ was, and we know where the body went. It's sitting on the right hand of the Father in heaven right now. Amen. Amen. He resurrected on the third day like he said he would do, and he'd he done the work that he said. He walked among man for 40 days and was seen above 500. <laughs> That's a pretty good witness. If two people can establish a witness of a situation then 500 would be great. So you got a lot that went on. So the planning started before creation, and the planning started by Christ. Now, when you get a hold of that, you understand that Christmas was pre-planned by Christ himself. Now, we know that the gift of Christmas is Christ, right? That's what it's all about. Well, he the one planned it. He set it up. He planned his death, burial, and resurrection. He planned his horrible crucifixion, the pain and the suffering and the agony that he would go through. And he had a plan. He had a purpose behind that plan. But it was planned by Christ because it says the Word was with God and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. By him were all things made. All things were made by him, verse 3. So we know that the planning started before creation and by Christ. You got it? So we're talking about planning Christmas. Now, number two, I want us to get a hold of the people that selected. Planning Christmas, the great event, the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, the people that were selected in this. Now, <clears throat> let me give you a couple Bible verses that you, unless you go through some devotional studies and read through your Bible every year, you probably skip some of these verses in your regular readings or studies. Uh, but Jeremiah 1, 5 says, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. God's saying to Jeremiah, Son, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordain thee a prophet unto the nations. God knows you before you was ever developed. He's planning the Christmas. So since God knows us all before we ever was, then he's the one doing the right selecting of the people that he wants involved in this great event, the birth of Lord Jesus Christ. So, Luke chapter 2 verse 21 says, And eight days were accomplished of the circumcising of the child. His name was called Jesus, which was so named of the angels before he was conceived in the womb. We're talking about the planning stage. Before he was ever conceived, he was already called Jesus. Now we know in studying the Old Testament, the word Joshua is the similar or same as Jesus. You've got typology in Joshua that matches a lot with Jesus, but that word, that word Joshua, 
is translated as Savior because Joshua saved the folks out of the wilderness setting and got them in Canaan land. So there's a picture of the Savior there. So we know that that come in a, a long time ago. Before, before he was conceived in the womb of Mary is already to be named Jesus. So it shows you God's already planning stuff long before you ever got here. Now I'm going to enlighten you. Before you showed up at church, before you planned last night to lay out what clothes you're going to wear today. Some do that, some don't. <clears throat> I do. Try to get everything ready so that I don't have the hectics and the aggravations and get me all out of whack on Sunday morning. That's a good thing to do, by the way. Do what you can to reduce any stress, fussing, or arguing that might go on. I know y'all probably don't do that. And since I've got Judy trained, I don't have to worry about it much. She's in the nursery. I can get by with it. She's in the nursery. Uh-oh, she's looking. She's pointing. I'm in trouble. Can I go eat with you today? I'm going to be in trouble. But this planning was long before we ever got here. Before we had the thought, before we was conceived in our mother's womb, God already knew who we was and what he wanted to do with us. That doesn't have a thing to do with Calvinism. Calvinism teaches that you're predestinated to go to heaven or hell. That's not true. You have a choice. Whosoever will let him come and take of the water of life freely. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved. Whosoever means you have a choice in being saved. But God knows things ahead of time. So in knowing things ahead of time, he makes some people selections. Now, you want to, you want to get into some of the selecting that God does to be on his team. Y'all remember we used to play, we played football. I don't know what y'all played. We liked to play football, played a little basketball, very little baseball, softball stuff. I played a little bit of little league baseball, but at home we played football, and you picked teams. Whoever the captain was got to pick who he wanted to be on his team. And I, you know, you always want to get, you know, always want to get on the real good team, you know. You're hoping to get selected to the real good team. And, and, and you know, if, if you get that selection right, you can have the winning team. Well, see, God knows all and is all, so he can, he can make the correct selection when he makes his choices. But he shows us, he don't have to, but he shows us why he selected the people in his planning of Christmas. When you go to Luke chapter 1, in verse number 28, the Bible says, And the angel came unto her, that being Miss Mary, and said, Hail, thou art... Now, that's not the wrong word. That's H-A-I-L. That's hail as in honor. Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Verse 30 says, An angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Now, what you need to do and I need to do is study Mary. We can learn a lot from Mary as to why God picked her, why God selected her, in his Christmas planning. If you'll follow her life, you're going to find that she was a godly woman. She lived a godly life. All of her, all of her uh, surroundings and the way that she functioned and her testimony was a great testimony. She was highly favored of God. So God selected her because of her good Christian living. This is before Christ is born. She was already living a good, that's why she was selected. She was living a good life. But she is also selected because she's in the genealogy. So setting up his genealogy, when he starts out with Adam in Genesis or Abraham, you've got two different genealogy starts in your uh, Christmas story. One starts at Abraham, the other one starts all the way back at Adam, and it brings it down to Joseph being the daddy, the stepdaddy of Jesus Christ, and Mary being the mother of of Jesus Christ, and you see the genealogies come together, but they trace back to Adam, Abraham. Back there, they make a split. We're not going to study on all that, but the birth of, of, of Jesus, the birth mother was selected by God. God picked out Mary. Boy, wouldn't it, wouldn't it be good to be 
living a life to where we find favor with the Lord and God would select us to do a great service for him? I mean, it, it, he's, got, he's got the services to be done. There's much service in the Lord open and available today for those that are willing. But we got to be willing to live the life to get that selection because of we find favor with the Lord. So there's the birth mother and then there's the birth daddy or the baby daddy because we know that the seed was planted by God. We know that it was not Joseph's and we know that in all the studies. But God selected Joseph to be the stepdaddy of his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. That's a pretty healthy selection. I mean, that's a pretty, that's a pretty highly favored position to be in, that God Almighty would select Joseph to rear up young Jesus. Can I give you a little something to think about this morning? God selected you to rear up some other children like Jesus and call them Christians. That's something heavy to think about. So he selected the birth mother. He selected the baby daddy. He selected, that's our carnal term we use today, the baby daddies. But Joseph, we know, was not the physical blood dad to the Lord Jesus Christ. He was God, the seed planted in the womb of Mary. And then when you study this chapter 1, verse 4, it talks about in him was life, and the life was the light of men. So here's, here's the Lord Jesus in Christmas, and he's bringing the light. Ain't it amazing how we like lights? Did y'all see that pretty little tree out yonder, and they got lights thrown all over that thing? <clears throat> you ride around of a night, and you'll see Christmas trees and lights all over the houses. We rode by one the other night. Man, it looked like daytime over there. They had so many of them big old pretty lights, and they had blue lights and white lights, and it was so bright it just about hurt your eyes. I mean, they lit the world up over there at that house. But you notice Christmas time is a time where a lot of folks throws out a bunch of lights. They want the lights to shine. May God help us to want to shine like that as Christians the rest of the year. Amen. So Jesus bring in the light. He, he's bringing the light. The, the lights of Christmas time is, is a representation or a reminder of Jesus Christ is the light of the world. That's what they're, they're, they're to let folks know, hey, and when you go study the Christmas tree, I preached on that a few years ago. I've been here 14 plus years now, so there ain't a lot that I hadn't preached in a little bit of that area. So, uh, But we preached about the Christmas tree, where it come from, who started that, and all that thing. Uh, some's against it, some's for it. Uh, if you don't like it, chew your chew, piece of chewing gum or something. Work that stress out and you'll be okay. It'll work. Amen. I, I do it for the purpose that it's there. Uh, we think about the tree that Christ died on and we light it up being the light of the world on the tree. Amen. Amen. So uh, that justifies my Christmas tree. If you don't like it, I'm sorry. Pray for me and get you another piece of chewing gum. <clears throat> Bright light, he is the light of the world. John 8, 12, this same book, John 8, 12 says, I, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. So he brought the light. He, the people selected, he, he's got Jesus Christ, the Son of God, has been the one selected to bring the light. Now, he is the pure light. He's the perfect light. And from him, we light the world. Remember Matthew chapter 5, he said, you're the light of the world, uh, not to be hidden under a bushel. You remember the little kid's song, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, hiding under a bushel, no, I'm going to let it shine, remember? That's from Matthew 5, where it talks about us being the light of the world. We're supposed to be lights. I think we talked about morning lights the other day, didn't we? We talked about we, we should be the morning light. We get up on a Monday morning while everybody else is sad and doomy and gloomy. We ought to go into work with a big old smile on our face. We got to go to church yesterday. Amen. Amen. Lord spoke to my heart. God's still been good to me. I got a reason to be happy. Amen. I'm going to heaven regardless of what happens to the world. And nobody, the devil and all the hell can't change it. I'm headed to heaven. Amen. So God help us to be the light of the world. But then you think about the baby to be born here 
he, he's not only bringing light, but the baby to be born. Verse 14, it says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. That's the, that's the uh, incarnation of the Lord Jesus Christ through the Virgin Mary. That, that, that's, that's the Christmas baby. That's Jesus. Not just a baby, not just any baby, but the one and only child of God, the only begotten. So God, in planning Christmas, he, his plan started before creation and by Christ, and then the people that he selected, his birth mother, Miss Mary, his, his baby daddy, brother Joseph, and, and then he brings the light, and he is the baby to be born. But he planned it. He planned for him to be the baby to be born into this world, this rotten, sinful world that he might redeem us unto himself. Now, redeem means to be bought. So he come, he planned Christmas that he might come and buy us for the Father. We're sold out in sin because when we first sinned, we committed sin. We transgressed against God. That made us sinners. We'd born sinners. We can't help it. That's just the natural way. And then come Jesus, the Christmas story, the whole thing of Christmas, the main theme of Christmas, the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, the baby to be born was Jesus. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Now, the plan was successful. Let me close with this thought this morning. When you study this, verse number 10, it says, he, he was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. So the plan's success is the baby that God had planned to be born through the Virgin Mary was born. That's a great success. The baby was born. But that baby was not just born to be a little old young and to grow up and Mom and Daddy to get to love and enjoy him and all that good stuff that goes with it. And then the papas and the, and the grandmas gets to play with them and, or the, the Mimis or the Lilies or the, or the Lalas or the Gigi's or the uh, Nanas or the Nannies or whatever you want to be called. You get to enjoy them babies. That was not Jesus' purpose. Jesus was born so that the baby could be given. They said to name him Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. He was born, born for one purpose. That baby was given. John 14 says, and Jesus answered said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me drink, thou wouldest ask of him, and he would have given thee living water. Jesus speaking to the woman at the well in John 4 says, If thou hadst known the gift, the gift, oh, that's who he is. The Lord Jesus Christ, he is the gift. The planning of Christmas was, was, was not a receiving of gifts by God, but a giving of gifts by God. And that's the purpose of us. What we do often in Christmas is we want to show our loved ones or those that we can that we love them and we'll buy something special and we'll give that gift to them, showing them that they mean so much to us. God gave us the ultimate, the best, the most perfect gift that could be given. That's why we have Christmas. The baby was given. Isaiah 9, 6 says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. See, this whole planning of Christmas that started before creation, that started by Christ, he initiated this plan, was brought to fruition, was brought to success when Jesus Christ was born in the manger. Now, we know that after his birth that Herod heard of that and he sought to have him killed. Now, you think about this. And you can classify that other crowd that seeks to kill babies as being anti-God. And if they don't like it, sorry. But to want to and have a heart to kill babies is anti-God. Typology's proven 
in the life of Herod because he sought to have the two-year-old and less killed. Wanting to kill babies is not a good thing. That's, that's, that's joining up with the devil crowd. We don't want any part of that. I know of a situation of a lady in the last few weeks. Her doctors looked to her and said, uh, what you're dealing with is you're with child. Due to the situation, it's going to be a high risk. Due to that, we think it would be a good idea for you to abort. That was a doctor at North Carolina Baptist Hospital that issued that advice. I personally think they ought to debar him today, never let him practice again. Because if he feels that way about life itself, then why in the world is he going to work on somebody else? In the conception, in the inception, in the beginning days of this, they make this decision. That's not a good decision. I have a precious granddaughter, six years old. When she was conceived, the doctors told Stephanie that she, she's probably diseased and we need to abort. That was what my daughter, my baby, was given by the doctor. And thank God of heaven that she had enough God about her and faith in that God, the God, to trust God. And now we have a wonderful, most beautiful little granddaughter that they said, you need to abort. It's crazy. Now, I could go on, I'll not name names, but I could go on this morning about a lot of mothers that are mothers, not just wives, because... They trusted God, and God done great work in their lives, and doctors had told them, you'll not have children. I could point folks out and identify folks, but I won't do that. But there's a lot of folks around that, that doctors missed it because they're not God. You leave the planning to God. You just do what God tells you to do, and things will be all right. Planning of Christmas was, was started by God. The people selected were selected because they were highly favored. They were folks that were living right, doing right. You want to do a work, a special work for God, then give your life to God. Give your living to God. Give your, 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 your love to God and let God take you and use you for a great task. God will use you if you'll let him. There's much to be done for the glory of God if you will give yourself to God and say, here am I. I can't live it, I can't do it, but with your help I can and I want to. That's what I'd done years ago. I wanted God to use me for his honor and his glory. And I gave myself, I ain't nothing. I, I could disappear today, you ain't lost nothing. I can be replaced, I'm not what they call that, indispensable or whatever. I, I, I'm dispensable. You can get another. God can give you another good man of God, just not, not a problem. But I want to serve the Lord because God gave so much for me. God, God was so good to me. But see, God has planned this thing of Christmas. And he chose the people to be part of Christmas. Now, I want you to get a hold of this chosen part a minute. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world. Every one of you, everybody listening, everybody watching, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God has already chosen you to be on his team. God has already chosen you to be his child. God has already chosen you to be saved, saved by the grace of God. You have to reject it or you have to receive it. That's your part. God gave you the gift of life. God gave you the gift of salvation. 
God's presented that gift, the Lord Jesus Christ, through the Virgin Mary on that great Christmas day. God gave us the perfect gift. God's placed it before us. God has multiple times placed it before people that you would know that God loves you and that God gave you this gift. You've got to receive it. You've got to open the package. You've got to take it on. God planned Christmas for you. Not that he might receive, but that he might give unto you his only begotten son. It's up to the lost to receive him. Now, just for a moment, I want you to think. Do you remember a time in your life where you realized that Jesus Christ was the Savior, that Jesus Christ is the sacrifice that's satisfactory to God, and that you're a sinner and need his salvation? Has there been a time in your life that you, in your heart, accepted the fact that he's the Savior, you're a sinner, and you asked him to save you? Verse 12 said, as many as them, as many as received him, you got to receive him. To them gave he power to become the sons of God. I'm a child of God because I received the Lord Jesus Christ. It's that simple. Are you willing today? To humble yourself before the Almighty God and say, God, be merciful, me a sinner. I want Jesus as my Savior. I want to be saved and know it. I want my sins forgiven. I have sinned against you. I want to be forgiven. If you don't know that you've done that, if you don't have a time in your life, if you don't have God in your heart, if you don't have a witness of the Spirit of God working in you, you need to be saved. You need to ask the Lord by faith. Believe that he'll do what he said he'll do. Ask the Lord to save you. He'll save you. God offers the gift. And it's our responsibility, our opportunity, our privilege to receive the gift. Have you yet received the gift that God planned for you? Let's pray. Father. In Jesus' name, I ask you to take the word of God today. Use it in the hearts of those before us. God, should there be one in our midst or looking online that does not know Jesus as personal Savior, may they see that great gift that God gave, pre-planned many years ago before the creation of this universe, before the creation of the world, you planned Christmas. God, should there be one that has not yet received Jesus Christ as their Savior, will you please deal with their heart today? Help them to know they're lost. Give them the faith they need to call on Christ. And may they do so this very moment and ask you, Lord, to save them. Lord, I pray for saved folk that you stir in our hearts and help us to appreciate the gift that you gave. And may we, in turn, give you to others. Help us to be the light we should be. In Jesus' name, I ask these things. Amen and amen. Let's all stand. You mind the Lord. God's touched your heart. God's dealt with your heart. Please come. Please come to the altar. Let God do a work in your heart. If you're unsaved, I'll take the Bible and help you see through the Word of God how you can be saved and know it. What a great Christmas it can be for you to receive the gift that God planned for you 
many years ago. See? 